kind of lukewarm. Still trying to stay in my sin of homosexuality too, just making all these excuses. And then it was this one night, I, I was honest with God. I was like, God, I can't see myself with a man. And then I just cried and cried and cried. And I asked him to please change the desires of my heart. Like, I really want to live for you, but I'm gay. And I feel like me being gay, I'm not going to be able to live out my full purpose. And then as I cried out, like, I felt like he was just there and he was listening. And over time, the desires started to change and stuff. You know, the enemy... Hey, what's going on, y'all? So I have a very special guest on today. Um, I saw her music a while back, actually. Um, and, you know, I saw it on my Explore page, and she was rapping, like, better than most rappers I hear, not only in Christian rap, but in the world. I was like, man, she's spitting. What the heck? And and I saw she was young, and she's on fire for God. And, um, you know, I just I kept following her music. And recently the Lord had actually put it on my heart to reach out to her to see if she wanted to um to do like a testimonial uh you know video like a podcast and she said she was cool with it and we got on so I have I have, uh, I have right now uh like I said a special guest she come she came out of the LGBTQ movement um she's going hard for the Lord and uh yeah man I got kid Lee on here so what's up what's up sis how you doing hey I'm doing good how are you doing good doing good so I like the interviews to just be raw, like just uncut, like no, like we're not going to edit it. We're not going to try to act funny. I want it to be just like a normal dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. And just, you just explain yourself like, like what, like how did Jesus encounter you? What happened? The the process that you've been going through, the progress, the downfalls, like um, up to, you know, just whatever you feel led to release just so, to help out people that um might be dealing with the same thing. So go ahead. Okay, so I got saved in 2020. Um, I was in this relationship. I had looked at the girl as an idol. Like, I was obsessed with her. I felt like I couldn't live without her. And um, I ended up losing my job, ended up being isolated because of quarantine. Mm. And then um, as I got isolated, I downloaded TikTok because, you know, everybody was using TikTok back then. So I downloaded TikTok and I ended up on Christian TikTok somehow. I don't know how, but I, I think it was God, like, calling me. And I seen all these Christians um, talking and stuff, and I got interested. So I started praying and stuff, started having conversations with God, started to hear back from him and stuff like that. He started to speak back to me in different ways. He became kind of like my best friend, um, fell in love with Jesus, and I, I used to cry out to him all the time, but still was kind of like iffy about showing people my faith and showing them that, showing them that I'm a believer and stuff mm. like that. You know, I was kind of lukewarm. I would show the world a different side, but then on the inside, I would be following Christ and um, still trying to stay in my sin of homosexuality too. Just making all these excuses, saying that like homosexuality wasn't really in the Bible and stuff like that. And, you know, he convicted me a couple of times, and then it was this one night. I um, I just was thinking about it. I was like, I, I was honest with God. I was like, God, I can't see myself with a man. I really can't. And I, I believe that you made me gay. I was open and honest to him. And then I just cried and cried and cried. And I asked him to please change the desires of my heart. Please change me. Like, I really want to live for you, but I'm gay. And I feel like me being gay, I'm not going to be able to live out my full purpose and stuff. So I really mm. just cried that night. And then as I cried out, like, I felt like he was just there and he was listening. And over time, the desires started to change and stuff. You know, the enemy would bring girls in my sight and stuff like that. But I wouldn't really like fall for it anymore. I wouldn't fall for the temptation. I had Jesus. I could always run to him and stuff. And that's really how he made me lose the desire. It kind of just left over time. It faded away. Oh, wow. So like, so like, um, how old were you when you, uh, when, when that happened? Like when you were like, God changed the desires of my heart. I was 17, about to be 18. Wow. So you were still in high school. Yeah. I had dropped out of high school though. So I was oh, taking. Wow. 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 And, and, and like, did, did, did you did you play sports in high school? Like were you were you were you always like like were you a, were you a tomboy? Were you like like was was this something that always that happened or like like since you were young or did you was there a transition? It was kind of like I didn't play sports for myself, but I played I ran track just because a girl that I liked ran track. I was just wow. kind of like I didn't go to school to learn. I went to school to get girls. Like that would be my main reason of going to school and being like popular and stuff like that. And having people look at me and um, just 
just look at me in different ways and like me and stuff like that because it would make me feel important it would make me feel loved so i would mm. just use people for their love going to school and you're generation z right yep so like in high school was it like i i know so i was i graduated high school in 2008 so i'm a millennial when i was in high school like homosexuality was like just starting to be accepted it was still like you know like it wasn't too much but i like from what i've heard now it's like really accepted like super accepted like like to the point where it's actually like people that are straight are trying to claim to be gay to be accepted yeah. because of rejection is that true like how, like what like what did you experience in high school regarding all that um so around the time i was in middle school it wasn't really accepted like that and i was afraid to come out but when I got in high school, it was accepted. Like there was a whole bunch of people um, being gay and coming out as gay. Wow. Like I know, like even the straight people like would turn gay out of nowhere. It was, it just got normalized by the time I was in high school. And why do you feel like people did that? Um, really deception from the enemy stuff. I feel like that's the main reason why is the enemy deceiving them, making them think that's their true identity and their sexuality, like and peer pressure, wanting to be like others. So, so do you think there was people in your high school that, like you said, were actually straight that were just being peer pressured into saying they're gay, but they weren't even they weren't even really gay and like forcing themselves to like the same sex? Yes, I do. I've seen it happen. Yeah, that's crazy, because if you think about it, that if, if the enemy can do that, that means in Christ, God can do it, too. But at a, obviously at a higher, you know, the devil takes everything. God doesn't perverts it. So like in yep. Christ, God was able to actually change your desires. So would you say like your desire actually changed? Like you started shifting from the des desires for the same sex? Yep. I started to desire what he desired for me. I started to ask him to make like his desires become my desires. And so I just started to just desire his will for my life. And I knew that his will for my life is not to marry a woman and to be gay and stuff like that. Amen. So that's basically what happened with that. That's how I, like, I lost the desire. I really just started to desire what he wants. You know, it's crazy. I, I just got off an interview with a, a brother who survived the, you know, the post nightclub shooting. Um. So there was, no. a, there was a big shooting in Orlando like seven years ago <clears throat> at a homosexual club and people were murdered. Like it was a terrorist that went in and like murdered a whole bunch of people. They got a memorial there and everything. And he was in that club. I mean, he's grown. And um, he's like, he's, he's like 40 now and he, he survived. He's seen his friends get killed. Like, bro, like, wow. man, like, like in front of him, like they stepped in front of him, got shot up like two of his friends, like crazy testimony. He's on like De La Fe and all that, which I think um you should even go. I, th I think you'll be on De La Fe soon too. Um, you should go look at that uh testimonial YouTube channel. You ever seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. It's I've powerful. watched it. I, th I think you'll be on there soon too. But um, yeah, he, I was talking to him about that because he came to the he came to Christ and you know uh just like out on fire but then like was going through a lot of process and he told me that the key was was seeking Jesus and falling in love with Jesus through the process and he was telling me how he would be he, he would still have the temptation and like different things but just him relying on Jesus and on yeah. identity like do you, do you feel like the same thing is for you at, at such a young age cuz you're you're blowing up with the music straight up mm -hmm. and and you're anointed like I'm going to ask you about the music later, but like your, your music is very, very good. Like it's, it's not like a, like average, like you're, you're going to go far with it. You already are. So like you blowing up and everything, like, does it, does the, does the enemy ever try to condemn you and make you feel like you're not, you're not who you got us, you know, said you are. And like, well, tell me about the struggles with identity. Yeah, I went through that a lot. Um, especially when I first came into this, he told me I wasn't worthy enough to make Christian rap because of my past and the because and because mm. the way that I that I dress because God hasn't changed my outside yet. So I get really insecure when it came to that. Like especially when the like religious people came and they would condemn me and they would just be like, Why are you dressing like that? God doesn't love people dress like that. So in in those type of ways, the enemy really tried to condemn me and break me down. Just make me look at my past. I noticed that he always tries to make me look at my past and not look at what God has ahead for me and like my future and stuff like that. And now, so that's just the ways he did it. Mm, you know, what's crazy is I heard a man of God tell me this about a year ago. He said, in Christ, your personality stays the same. It's your character that changes. Because you see me, I'm tat like I'm tatted up. Like I like certain clothes. I, I speak a certain way. Um, I'm, I, you know, I like, I, I move a certain way. My character is becoming more and more like Christ. 
I'm changing and transforming in character, but like the things I like, like, you know, like the way I dress, the way I act, it stays the same. You know what I'm saying? So like for, for someone to look at you and be like, you know, judge the outer appearance or even me, like how are you a pastor with tattoos? You're right. It, it is, it's, it's religious. It's, it's pharisaical. That's how the Pharisees were, you know? And, the, and they, they would look at Jesus because he dressed like everyone else and they would judge him like, you know, why are you dress like, you know, why are you looking like that? Why are you healing on the Sabbath? You know, why are you hanging out with those people? And it's because he was trying to reach the loss in love. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. have you, have you have, have do, you, do you have like a good support system of people around you that love you and truly like their love is, is helping you grow and grow and grow more? Yeah, God has really brought some amazing people to my life. Ever since I lost all my um, friends in the world, he brought mm. me a circle of Christians and they just they just lift me up. I can always go to them for support and for help and stuff like that. We talk on the phone. We read the Bible together. We talk about God. We pray. So I have an amazing circle of people. Wow, wow, wow. And accountability is key. Like having people around. Because like even with me, I need that. I need that accountability, that mentorship you know, that father in my life to, you know, to, to father me in the faith, to mentor me like other fathers in the faith. You know, I got, I got mentors all around me. So like, do you, do you also have women of God that are, um, that are in your life that are helping you out? Yep. I actually just met this one lady. Um, she's my spiritual counselor now. She helps me out a lot. She disciples me and stuff like that. God blessed her with, um, blessed me with her in, in my life. Wow. 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 So, um, I know you said you came from that movement and um, when you came to uh, to Christ, did you receive a lot of backlash from from like people that are in the LGBTQ community? Did they come at you like hard? Yes, they did. Especially uh -huh. when I finally came out about it and put it on Instagram and posted my testimony. Mm -hmm. There was hundreds, hundreds of LGBT people just coming at me so hard just like saying like i'm judging them and i wasn't even really judging them i was just posting my testimony so that's how you know it was conviction of the holy spirit so literally just coming at me so hard and then some of my exes um when i first came into christ i told them that i wanted to follow jesus and that i didn't want to be gay anymore and they kind of just laughed in my face and was like why would jesus mm. die for us didn't want you to enjoy your life and be who you are. Like, that's literally what they told me. Wow, 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 wow. Because I, I, remember, I remember going through one of your posts. Um, I think it was your testimonial post and seeing the comments. And I was like, dang, man. But I saw the way that you responded. And it was in straight love. Like, you didn't spaz on them. You didn't come back at them, like, trying to hurt them. Like, you just showed love. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah. you, and, I, and that's what made me, like, like really just have a different type of respect for you. I was like, man, she's not just a Christian rapper. She has the character of Christ. Like, cause you know, there's, there's a lot of all types of people in ministry nowadays, not just music. And you can't really tell unless you see their fruit. You know what I'm saying? Like the love, yeah. the love of God. And when I saw those comments, that's actually what led me to reach out, reach out to you. I was like, let me, let me, let me, let me text her, man. Cause I, I feel like as you know, you look young. I, I was, I wasn't sure if you're a millennial. I mean, um, generation Z, but I was like, man, there's so many people caught up in that in generation Z that need to come out. You know, there's a mass exodus happening right now. You know, a lot of prophets yep. have prophes prophesied about, about the 100,000, um, you know, uh, L uh, people coming out of the LGBTQ community, uh, specifically a prophet um, named Bob Jones. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's a prophet. He's in heaven now, but he prophesied about the revival that we're in now. And that first, there would be a, a, max, a mass exodus of 100,000 coming out of the LGBTQ that would walk in miracle signs and wonders. And then it would just it would go crazy, like a tsunami of souls being saved. So like, I believe that you, you and I, like we're like, we're like at the forefront of this tsunami coming. And that's why the Lord has, has is rising you up because even though you see this, the Pharisees and you see the haters, you know what I'm saying? You are, there's also a lot of people watching that you don't know that are like being discipled by you through your music, like encouraged that look for your videos. Like they're looking, they're yeah. waiting for you to drop. Like, okay, I can do this. Like you give them that encouragement. Have you had people reach out to you and say thank you about their music? Oh yeah, all the time. I have people like that in my DM. For real? Any testimonies and what I did for them and how it made them want to get closer to Christ and stuff like that. Asking me how I did it and what did I do and how did I be delivered from certain things. It's just amazing to see that. I believe that, you know, I believe the music is a ministry that you're stewarding now, but I believe in the future the Lord's going to have you 
um, discipling and um, winning to Christ a lot of people out of the LGBTQ community. Do, do you feel that? Yeah, I do. I feel like the Lord's preparing you. He's, um, you know, you got the spiritual mentors in your life, you know, men and women of God. And I believe God's preparing you for that. And you're going to help a lot of people. You, you know, you're going to, you're going to partner with pastors. You're going to partner with pastors and leaders and help people understand the language, like, like the actual language or like the way that people move. Cause you know, a lot of us as pastors, like, especially me, right. I'm a pastor. I, I didn't come out of the LGBTQ. I came out of witchcraft. I came out of, you know, drug dealing and, and you know, sexual immorality, but not, I don't understand what it's like to be, you know, part of that community and, and thinking that you're gay. So like, mm -hmm. I don't have that, like that compassion, like I, like I need to, to help, to help defeat the giants that like, or that, that giant that the, the, the people are facing. I got to know how to, the warfare for that giant and what to speak. And that's what my brother, um, Lewis, uh, that I just interviewed was talking to me about. He was like, it's different giants for different battles. Do you feel like, do you feel like a lot of people kind of like are doing it the wrong way? Like, even if, you know, like even me, I had some, like when I, when I finished that interview with him, I was like, man, I feel convicted, man. Like some of the exposed videos I made were like, I could have done it more loving or, you know, more compassionate. Do you feel like a lot of Christians are coming at people in that movement and they're not being loving like they should? Yeah, I do. Because um, being in that community, in the LGBT community, I did have a few Christians come to me and literally just tell me that I was an abomination and that I was going to go to hell. And I don't think that that's the way to do it. I don't think that's doing it in love, but that's just trying to make them fear, like go to God out of fear. And I mm. think that's, that's very wrong. Amen. And and like, um, and where do you think it all stemmed from? I, I know he was talking to me about where things rooted from. And he told me that, you know, there were some deep things from the past with his parents and all that. Where do you think a lot of this stemmed from? Like, because you believe in deliverance. I know, I know we spoke on the phone. You said you got delivered. After you, you got yeah. baptized, you got delivered. So you know that, you know, Christians could have a demon. You could need deliverance. You believe in that, mm -hmm. right? So, yep. so, like, what do you think started, like, the spiritual you know, trans like the demonic transformation. When did it start? So I did have a rough childhood with um my parents and stuff like that. And I was bullied in school, particularly by boys and stuff like that. And also, I'm not going to lie, it came from a little bit of it. Well, a lot of it came from porn, being curious, searching on the web and um, watching Porn pornography and stuff like that and I would just see different kinds of pornography and get curious and stuff like that and that's just how that's actually how the desire to be with a woman grew is seeing like porn and how the woman was and like woman on woman and stuff like that and I do think that's how I had um, had those spirits in me that came out when I did get delivered I was still indulging in that even as being a Christian because I could I couldn't control it you know so that's why I had to get the deliverance so I think it really most of it actually came from pornography wow hey same thing happened with me I mean I was dealing with it my whole life since I was a teenager all the way till 29 so when I got delivered I I mean when I when I when I overcame it I needed deliverance. Like I needed demons casted out of me because they they were they they didn't want to leave. It was like it was an urge. I, I know what you're talking about. It's like a an overpowering urge where it like shifts you to where you do it. You know what I'm saying? And yep. like and a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, I got saved, I don't need deliverance, I can't have demons. Yet you could be demonically oppressed and need deliverance. We receive deliverance as Christians, which is a good thing. Like it's for us, it's the children's bread. So I think it's pretty cool that as a Christian you needed deliverance. You received it and not like and now that you've been delivered um for, for for you know time now how do you feel like is it like is it a complete change now like you literally don't have that urge no more yes like i'll be so completely honest i couldn't go more than 10 days without doing it and this is the first time in my life that i've been three months clean from it so that's just amazing to me oh. because like little kid I was watching it and I could not stop for nothing and it's like now I feel like I can just bind it and rebuke it whenever it comes in my <laughs> mind and it just go but then like before the deliverance I would try to bind and rebuke it and it would just stay like yeah. it would just stay like there so I knew something had to be wrong like I had to have a demon or something yeah because a lot of people don't even like not not just L coming out of the LGBTQ just people in sexual immorality period like there's a lot of young kids that 
they got access to that cell phone, that iPhone. And it's so easy. Like back in my day, like when I first started watching porn, it was dial up internet. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to go on a big computer and like, but now it's so accessible. It's like that a lot of these people, they have demons. They need deliverance. They need someone with the faith, you know, that has that revelation of deliverance to cast it out of them. And these demons need to come out. And when they come out, it's so much easier. Like you, cause you know, your authority, your faith increases. You don't, that overwhelming feeling's not inside you anymore. It's more like on the outside. You peep that, like it's, you feel that, like it's on the outside yep. trying to tempt you. And that's, and that's never going to end. I'm going to keep it like, and that's with anything, like the temptation. That's why Jesus said, deliver me from, you know, temptation. I mean, he, he said, keep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, like in, in, in the Lord's prayer, he said to keep him away, like, Lord, keep me away from all temptation. So I think it's cool how you got delivered and like, and you're, and, and, and people can know that, hey, yo, a Christian could have a demon and, and you can need deliverance from that addiction to porn. Man, I want to talk about your music, man. Like, like what are, what are your plans? What does the Lord reveal to you about what he wants you to do with your music? Because I know you're going viral. Your music's taking off. I seen you even have some powerful features with some amazing anointed artists. Like, where, where do you think God's taking you with your music? Um, honestly, I think he just wants me to reach more people with the music and stuff like that. That's honestly all I feel now. Like it's, it's all to me, it's all about saving souls, bringing souls to Jesus and stuff like that. Hey man, I really feel like you're going to be casting out demons. I feel that. Yeah. I, I've been the dreams about casting out demons and I've been feeling the urge too. So yeah, I, I, I do think I'm going to be doing that. Yeah. Um, I would say read, uh, read books on deliverance. Um, there's some good uh, ministers like Derek Prince. I don't know if you ever heard about him. That's a guy named Derek Prince, um, Alexander Pagani. I mean, like you see all the deliverance ministers start searching because when you receive that knowledge, that's when God can like start teaching you more and more. And then you'll start seeing it happening around you. People that are going to hit you up. They're going to be like, yo, you know, Kid Lee, I need deliverance. And I believe mm -hmm. I even just seen a vision right now that you're going to be on Instagram live and you're going to be praying for people a lot of youth and you're going to be casting demons out on live. Wow. Yeah. I just seen yeah, it quickly. Just, sh quickly. You're going to be doing it and you're going to pray for healing. You're going to be moving in miracle signs and wonders. Like you can't imagine. You wow. think it, you think it's only music. That's what you think. God got you in through music because that is your gifting. That's your anointing. That's, your, that's, that's one of your callings. And I don't think you'll ever stop, but I, ooh, so I just seen a vision that, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're called, you're called to prophesy. Because then I just saw you like in a church and with a microphone, you were older and you look different and you were older and you're gonna be, you're gonna be prophesying, a prophetess of the Lord. The Lord's gonna use you for that. He's training you. But now as an evangelist, like, because that's what you're doing, you're evangelizing, you're winning souls. You see, the Lord showed me that this morning. And I really had a heavy heart for the Christian rap community because I'm like, man, so many anointed, talented artists, and that they're evangelists, but we they, they, they just need to. They, they, we all we all need to move in power, and you're one of them. Mm -hmm. You're going to be moving in power. You're going to have events, and you're going to have many people come, and you're gonna. It's going to be many, many people, and you're not just going to do a performance and leave. You're going to have altar calls. You're going to pray over people, and you're going to cast demons out. You're going to heal the sick, and it's going to be a lot of Generation Z. Mark my words. You're going to be winning so many souls to Christ and you're going to have a ministry. It's going to be a, a, like an internet revivalist ministry, kind of like, like what you see a lot of people do on the internet with revival. And you're going to be winning yeah. so many souls like crazy. Like you're going to be bringing them in. I see fish. You're just going to be, it's going to be, God's going to entrust you because you have the testimony. But what I felt like when I, when I spoke to you on the phone is like you broke through the barrier. Like there's a, there's a plateau, right? that I've seen with the people that come through anything. It could be witchcraft, LGBTQ, drug dealing, whatever it is. And they can't get over the plateau. You know what I'm talking about? That plateau. Mm -hmm. And and they, they end up going back to the world, going back to the world. They come back, come back. But you you stayed strong. You trusted the process and you actually, you took, you took off. You're over the plateau now. God is about to fast track you because that prophecy from Bob Jones, that prophet, you should go look it up. He said that the that the, the 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 people who come out of the LGBTQ community, they're going to be moving in miracle signs and wonders like never before. Wow. That's you. 
You're going to be moving. It's not just going to be music, man. It's not going to just be just, oh, let me just go, go up and do a song. And everyone says, okay, cool. And then, all right, my set is done. Let me go home. Nah. You're going to have such a fire to win souls. It's going to be, it's going to be undeniable. The anointing. It's just going to be like, yeah, you're going to do your music to draw them in. That's the bait. Draw them in. But then you're going to be winning them to Christ, praying for them at the baptism tub. They're going to be getting delivered from demons, praying for healing. People are going to be getting healed. You're going to even have people, the guy's going to start sending you more videographers in this new season. Mm -hmm. people, are, people are just going to be like, I just, I just want to record a video for you. I just want to help you out. And they're going to go to your events and they're going to record all this. And you're not, you're not just going to be one of those Christian rappers that just, that just do music. You're going to be a real deal, like, like, like well-balanced evangelist. Does that make sense? Yep. Has, 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 has anyone, yes. I saw my fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say some of those things that you told me, God actually has been showing me. So I think that's confirmation for real to hear that from you because I've been having dreams about those about those things. I literally had a dream the other night that I was speaking to the youth. I was laying hands on them. I was praying for them. I was tell I was exposing things to them. Like and just to hear you say that is it's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna pray an impartation before we get off later that that the Lord will. It's the working of miracles. It's, it's, there's nine gifts of the spirit. And one of them is the working of miracles. And the, I feel like the prophetic as well. I'm gonna, I don't have to be there laying hands on you. Just like, you know, the Bible says, you know, like you can receive impartation through laying of hands. I'm going to pray through the screen. And I believe God's going to start to show you more. And I believe that impartation is going to be activated. And you're going to, it's going to happen sooner than you think. It's not going to take long. That same drive and that same like fire you have for music, because you're, you just you're good at it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can sit down and you can make a song quick, right? Thirty minutes, yep. it, nothing, easy, light work. Like it's so natural to you. You got to put that same work in for the um for for the kingdom because like these these gifts that we have, people think oh the gift of the prophetic just gets thrown on you and that's it. No, you have to exercise it. It's like it's like going to the gym. If I start lifting like my biceps, I got to keep going so I can get swole. It's the same yeah. thing. Like what I'm doing is I'm going to be, I'm giving you a, I'm giving you a weight. Like here, there's a new a workout routine. Now you're going to get your shoulders right. So now the prophetic, the working of miracles, you got to start studying, working out and preparing and God's going to lift you and you're going to be moving. And that, that is the will of God. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the will of God. hundred percent. I feel fire on my body right now. That's the will of God. And you, God's already given you the dreams to confirm it. And I'm going to say something. God gives prophetic words to people through people. Or he'll give you dreams that are prophetic, but it's up to you to climb the mountain. I always give this analogy. You got the mountain. God shows you what's on top. He says, you know, Kid Lee, Leandra, at the top is where you got to go. This is what I have for you. I have all this for you up here. People get the prophetic word and they think, oh, it's going to just fall in my hands. No, you got to climb up the mountain. There's going to be beasts, come wild beasts coming at you. There's going to be storms. There's going to be times you got to pitch up a tent. There's other times people, other people got to push you up because you're about to fall. So you got to put in work to get to that point. But it's going to happen. And the Lord's going to, is going to, is going to show you more than you can imagine. You're going to be, you're, you're going to be going around the U.S. I really believe you're going to be one of those Christian rappers that also going to be casting out demons, healing the sick, winning souls. Churches are going to be calling you out left and right because your testimony, and I know we got into it briefly, and I know I, I even know there's deeper things that the Lord's going to put on your heart later to release as you grow in your calling. But your testimony is a chain-breaking testimony. And, and, you're, and you're not just going to be used for your testimony. You know how sometimes people just use people for their testimony? Nah. Yeah. You ain't just going to be that person. You're going to be seasoned, mature. You're going to be able to minister, teach, preach, prophesy, like they're gonna see like this person is not just a testimony, you know. Kid Lee is a real deal, like woman of God. Like she's a real deal soldier. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Man, is there anything that you would want to tell um, the people, like Generation Z or anybody young, young people that that might be thinking, like, man, I'm gay and there ain't nothing I could do about it. Like I don't know. Like, what, what would you want to tell them? 
I would just tell them that there is hope in Jesus because when I was in the world, a lot of times I would feel like there was literally no hope and that one day I was just going to die and it was just going to be that. I was literally just going to die being gay and stuff like that. But there's literally hope in Jesus and he loves you so much and he can give you a peace like no other. He can give you joy like no other. You will not find joy in the things in this world. You will not find joy in sexuality and stuff like that. You will only find joy and peace in Christ. Mm, the cornerstone, putting them at the forefront. Amen. And, and do you want to say a prayer for anybody that might need prayer, uh, that watches this testimony? Yeah, I can. Father God, I pray for the people that's watching this testimony right now. Lord, I pray that you do a work in their lives. I pray that you hold their hands and that you reveal things to them, that you reveal yourself to them. Um, Lord Jesus, I thank you for everybody who tuned into this live. And I ask that you bless them right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Hey, y'all go check out my sister's uh, uh, music, I, I, all, social, all all streaming platforms, right? You got Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, right? You got all that, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, go check out her music. It's Kid Lee, and it's it's, a, it's Kid with two Ds, right? Yep, two Ds. Two Ds, Kid Lee. Y'all go check it out. Man, it's powerful for real. I'm not just saying it to say it. Anointed, and y'all see True Woman of God. Y'all keep her in prayer because she's going to go far. And man, I, I, Kid Lee, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. God bless you. God bless you too. All right. Hey, what's going on, family? God bless you all. Make sure if you like this video, click that like button. Also, go comment down below what you liked about the video. Click the bell icon for more notifications and go share this video to all your friends and family. Also, there are many accounts impersonating me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I will never ask you for money through WhatsApp. So if you get someone impersonating me with a fake account, make sure to block it and report it. Also, if you'd like to partner with us, click the description down below on the video and you'll see all the ways to partner we appreciate all those who help us expand this vision to the nations partnering with us in prayer and financially we thank you so much and also those who partner with us liking the video commenting down below clicking that bell notification and sharing it to all your friends and family we thank you the gospel is being spread throughout the nations people are getting saved delivered and healed the lord jesus christ is being glorified thank you for all our partners in jesus name